and welcome to today's episode. You guys have seen that we just got our brand new 33 Invincible, but with that, of course, we needed to make sure we had the right safety gear because it's a new boat and there was nothing on it. So this video is for you guys for the required, United States Coast Guard required, safety equipment needed. Exactly. Now, one thing I do want to say is this video is specific to boats 40 feet and under. However, there are some caveats and general rules in there depending on the exact vessel you run. So please go ahead and do your own research on this. We will go ahead and put links in the description box for where we got this information. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Foremost, we are going to be talking about the items that are required that you need to go to the store to buy that your boat does not come with. Lastly, we're going to go over our personal must-haves, our personal safety must-haves. The very first item we are going to talk about is your state documents and your state lettering. You are going to want, the best thing to do is to get a folder or binder and put any paper documents you have in this folder or binder. You might want to make a copy of, the, of them so they don't get wet. You might want to laminate it, do something put it in a Ziploc bag, which is what we have done in the past. This is also a great place to go ahead and put your fishing licenses in if you are fishing or if you have anything like that paperwork, you really do wanna have a nice, clear, organized spot for that on your boat. Maybe your insurance, anything like that. You want that in a file, folder, binder. And then you're also going to want your state lettering clearly visible on the outside of the boat, on the whole of the boat. Just like how your car has a license plate, your boat's gonna have lettering on the outside of the boat. If there is anything at all that you get from this video, it's this, please get life jackets and please get one per person on the vessel. We personally buy more than we know we'll need. Let's say we know at any given time we will have at max eight people on this boat, we'll buy 10. Please buy more than you need. Also for children, make sure you buy them for each individual child. If you have a 13 year old, make sure you have a life jacket that fits the 13 year old. If you have a 10 year old, make sure it fits the 10 year old and the three year old and the two year old. So for children, make sure the life jackets specifically fit the child. The next thing to note is that they need to be readily accessible, not in bags, locked away, nothing like that. So this in a bag, in a hatch, this is not an option. They need to be easy to grab and accessible. Exactly, Emily, so why don't you open that up? So when you buy your life jackets, if you buy this kind, they come in this bag. So you're gonna open that bag. Emily, why don't you go ahead and store them? So this is actually our um, fish box, but for now, go ahead and store them in there. So you can see they're clearly just one hatch away from being able to be worn. You also need to make sure that your life jackets are US Coast Guard approved. Now it is very easy to figure that out. Simply look at your life jackets before you buy them, or if you already have some, double check that they're Coast Guard approved. Lastly, you need a Type 4, which is a throwable device. Now this throwable device needs to be within arm's reach. You can see I have my yellow square throwable device right here. So if I'm running the boat, someone goes overboard, there's an emergency situation, I can grab it and quite literally throw it overboard. Just like the individual life jackets, the Type 4 also needs to be Coast Guard approved. If this yellow square is not your style, that is okay. They have other types of Type 4s. We will keep this ring usually forward of the helm and the Type 4, the yellow Type 4 right on the console. So we tend to have both. This is a 33 foot boat and there may be people sitting in multiple seats. So the more you have, you really can't have too many the safer you are. As far as visual signals go, I highly recommend getting a kit. They usually come with more than you need. Here we have our day and night flares, and because these are qualified for a day and night, you actually don't even need the day only signal. However, it does come with both, which is great. It also comes with a whistle, which is required, but it's not actually a visual signal, so that's gonna be our next category. This kit is gonna go ahead and take us straight into our next category, sound producing devices, which is why I said getting a kit is great, because it comes with one. A whistle, any boat under 39 feet is required to have at least a whistle on board. Other sound producing signals can include an air horn, or maybe your boat itself has a horn. The last item that you are required to go out and physically buy is a fire extinguisher, and not just any fire extinguisher, a marine grade fire extinguisher. Depending on the class that you buy will depend on how many are required. In our situation, we have a 33 foot vessel and we have a 5B class, which means that we need two. We actually have three on our boat right now. So make sure you double check those regulations for your own vessel. If you've made it this far, we are glad you care as much about safety as we do. The last and final list we're gonna go over is our personal 
must haves for your vessel. Now, every time we go on a boat, we carry this little dry box with us that has basically everything in our personal must have list. A personal locator beacon. Even if your vessel already has an EPIRB installed, we carry this with us. Not only for our boats, but if we're getting on a friend's boat or a kayak or a paddleboard or any other vessel, the nice thing about having this little dry box is I have my own pretty much miniature EPIRB that stays with me at all times. Up next, several forms of Dermamine. We personally don't get seasick, but if we have friends on board or if we go on a boat and somebody is getting seasick, we have given this out to people and it is a game changer. The worst thing that can happen when you're out there is you're dehydrated, you're seasick, so you're throwing up and then that dehydrates you and it's just a horrible combination to be in the sun. So always, always have Dramamine. We've got Dramamine, we've got, um, this is like a off-brand Dramamine and we even have ginger chews. This one is specific to us, an extra pair of contacts at all times. We are both incredibly blind without contacts. Like I literally cannot read the world's largest letters out there. So extra contacts is a huge must to have. I literally have extra contacts in every single one of the bags that I own, but maybe for you that's glasses. You wanna make sure if you wear contacts, you bring your glasses, but you always just kinda of wanna make sure you can see. Cause if you lose your eyesight out there, that's a problem. Extra charts is going to be incredibly important. So let's say you lose your machines and your electronics. You're gonna want extra charts. Maybe for you that's paper charts, but for us, that is apps on our phones. So there are some great apps that give you amazing charts that can be used offline. One of our go-tos is Navionics. I'll go ahead and link that for you guys. This one might sound silly, but we think it is highly important to always have an anchor on board. Not only one anchor, but two. So what we do is we always keep an anchor stored in our anchor locker, and we normally keep a second one somewhere in a hatch just in case we lose the first one. Let's say you're out there fishing or whatever you're doing, and you lose control of your engines or they go dead. Hopefully you're in shallow enough water, you can just throw an anchor, let yourself sit there, call the Coast Guard, call help, whatever you need, but you're at least not just drifting aimlessly out there. Lastly, a first aid kit. There are some great first aid kits out there. You can never have too much first aid. I would always make sure you have that on your vessel as well. Don't forget to check the description box for any additional safety videos and the sources we use. We will go ahead and link everything so you can see where we're getting this information from. This video is specific to our 33 foot vessel. However, almost all of this applies to boats under 40 feet. So if you are watching this, please go ahead, get the safety equipment you need for your boat. In the meantime, we want you to get out there, have fun and stay safe. You need your phone? So it doesn't see our legs, right? Yeah, I might see your shorts though. Okay, so I'm really excited. Okay, okay. Oh, it is important to mention that each life... Okay, do that again. Now this is a 33 foot invest... Okay, let's do that Can again. you do it one more time, but I feel like you were like yelling a little bit. Oh. The last float floatable device? All right. Come on, lay down. Why do you say lay down now, should just down? Is it like maybe blowing up the mic? Oh, okay. okay. As far as safety signals go, we definitely recommend um, visual signals. All right. That's it. Good girl. That's it. All right, ready? Yeah. I feel like you, like, I don't know what I'm saying. Like, it usually come with more than you need. It usually come with, like, I want to say the disclaimer. Ready? How's that? That was good. Okay. Depending on the style of the class. The class? The class. Okay. That was good. That's okay. what I wanted to do. Oh, that was good. I'm um, just to know you said elaminate them. So I laminate. Okay. I'll do it one more time. Okay. In our situation, we could only have one. We could get away with having one. We would one. only need only one. one. Okay. It's B5, right? Not 5B. But that was really good. I liked right. it. Okay. I just thought it, it would look cheesy, like sitting here holding a life jacket. Well, I don't want to move the trap because the trap is already in a good spot. But right. I, for life jackets, it would almost be great to like pick it up and show, like, this is where we're keeping them and they're not in the bag, so you can oh. open it. Or, or we sit down and do it and we just go get B roll and we B roll us open. That's true. Okay, like, that's a good We idea. can do that. Okay. Well, I don't know what the, it looks like from the camera. What do you think? If you have nothing in your book, have this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that, that was, was good. good.